Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blogs. So let's get to it. All right, you guys, I'm just a little tired today. I did get my iPhone. I was up at 3 o'clock just like I planned, and uh, actually it went very quickly and very smoothly. Got the phone that I wanted. I was done probably by 3.02. And then I proceeded to stay up till 5 o'clock in the morning just to be back up at 7 and I'm just exhausted so we gonna do this video and then I'm gonna take it back up to my office and act like I'm not falling asleep at my desk every 15 minutes <laughs> first story up you guys I want to say all of my rock stars that are up in North Carolina South Carolina um, Virginia Maryland um, I want to do a special shout out to you all hoping you are all staying safe from hurricane florence it seems that florence hit land in north carolina last night sometime um it had been downgraded from a category four hurricane down to a category one but that should not make you feel that comfortable considering this hurricane is very very large very very widespread and very very slow moving so um, as opposed to hurricanes that just whip in, um, you know, tear up shit and then keep on moving or dissipate, um, they're expecting this hurricane, even though it's a category one, it is expected to hover and more so move quite slowly across the land, even if it is on the coast there, um, moving slowly. And high, high winds that are constant can still do quite a bit of damage and devastation. They're saying also that there are storm surges of 10 to 12 feet. And because of this, they're expecting quite a bit of flooding. Some cities have already flooded. There are already people there are stranded um, on their rooftops. Um, I even read some people in their attics, which is, we know that is dangerous and pretty much a no-no. I hope they're able to get out of there, but they are waiting to be um, rescued. So even though it's a category one, they don't want people to get it confused. It's still very dangerous conditions. And if you are able to get out, then you need to do so. If you aren't able to get out, you need to be prepared, you need to hunker down, you need to have your supplies. They're not promising that they can get to everybody at a timely time. You know, people can expect to be waiting. Um, I think they said that over 400,000 residents are without power and they're expecting rain to reach somewhere around 40 inches in certain areas. A lot of water coming down, a lot of water being pushed in from the shore and from the lakes. I just want to say again a special shout out to my rock stars that are out that way. Hopefully you have not been affected. Um, and if you have been affected, hopefully the damage has not been that bad. Man, the United States and the East Coast and the South over here, the Southeast has really been hit hard with these hurricanes these last couple of years. As of now, it has not moved up to Virginia and Maryland, but um, they're bracing for the storm. Not quite sure if it will dissipate anymore before, you know, it, it hits up there and just become maybe downgraded even more to a tropical storm but um yeah to my rock stars out there hold your heads up we are praying for your safety for yourself and your families and hopefully this storm will pass soon you guys on um september 6th in dallas texas um it seems amber geiger was getting home from a shift at work she is a dallas police officer when she got home she mistakenly parked on the fourth floor deck instead of the third floor deck that she normally parks on. She proceeded to her apartment. She put her key in the door, but the door was already ajar. When the door pushed open in the dark, she could see a figure coming towards her. She said that she told the figure to stop. She said she gave the figure commands. I'm assuming it meant stop. The figure did not stop. She pulled out her gun and shot twice. One of the bullets did hit the victim, a Mr. Baltham Jean, or Jean, excuse me if I'm saying his name incorrectly. She shot Mr. Jean and one of the bullets hit him in his torso. When she went to turn on the light, she realized that she was in the wrong apartment, that she had shot somebody um, that was probably in their right apartment. And uh, she made a 911 call stating that she shot somebody. He was later pronounced dead from a gunshot wound to his torso. And um, you guys have heard the story. They did not arrest her immediately, and it took some story going viral before 
the police department, the Dallas Police Department, decided to charge her with manslaughter. That charge can be upgraded for sure to murder, but as of now, she is out on bail. She is on paid administrative leave until they investigate this story. Depending on who you ask, um, even the Dallas Police Department and the Texas Rangers have two different stories, two different accounts of what might have happened. The account that I just gave you was the story that Dallas, Cow uh, Dallas, Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Police Department gave. The Texas Rangers said that her story was that he was at the door when she pushed it open, um, as opposed to a figure being across the room in the dark. And of course, there are rumors flying around that Mr. Jean and Amber were involved in some sort of relationship. I have seen the picture of um, him along with three other women that's been going around. They said that those women in that picture are not Amber and two of her friends or anything. So they did not, supposedly, they did not know each other. There's rumors about her family being part of a white supremacist group, but they are trying to shoot that down and say that that is not true. And um, you know how these stories go. There is a lot of people weighing in from social media that sometimes can cloud the investigation and it's hard to tell what may or may not be true. So the district attorney in Dallas is investigating. Um, they are trying very hard to keep this case in the county. They want to do so. And whatever the um, Bureau of Investigation, I'm assuming, will uh, come up with will determine um, the charges, if any, um, when it goes towards the grand jury. The grand jury, I guess, will decide what the charges will be. Yesterday, people were furious with the story that had come out from the Dallas Police Department were trying to assassinate Mr. Jean's character by reporting that marijuana was found in his apartment. They said 10.4 grams of marijuana was found and a marijuana grinder. And for a person that doesn't smoke like myself, like 10.4 grams, I didn't even know if that was a lot or a little. People tell me that that's not even a lot. You think that that's a whole bunch of weed, you know, you start thinking that possibly could have been distributing weed. Um, I wasn't thinking that, but I'm just saying how people can start to assume something and, and these news stations and these police departments know this. So this is the reason why they put these type of stories out. Fox News 4 in Dallas put out the story that, you know, the, the grams of weed was found, the grinder, and that was headlining their story. So, of course, people were upset about that. It's not even a lot of weed. And even if it was, what does it have to do with anything? And the man was in his own home, minding his own business. And whatever might have happened there, the weed was in the apartment, has nothing to do with the fact that he was shot and killed um, an innocent man in his own apartment. And then they didn't even make mention of what else was found in the um, apartment. I did find out, though, that amongst other things, they found a ballistic police vest, a backpack with police equipment, and paperwork. So that makes it a little different, right? He's not a police officer. Why would he have these things in his home? You have a woman who is a police officer who um, claims that she was in the wrong apartment and she shoots and kills him. Um, I know if I was the Jean's um, lawyer or even family members, my very next question would be, whose paperwork was it? What was up in that uh, you know, backpack? And we need to get to the bottom, bottom of this because there is still something very fishy with this story. And if he wasn't connected to Amber, then he was connected to somebody else in the police department. It just feels like there's a cover-up somewhere. We'll hear more about this story, I'm sure, um, because the family wants answers, of course. The mother wants to know why her son is dead. I had a rock star that reached out to me. Her name was Felicia. Um, she said that she was his best friend and that he was a great person and he smiled and talked to everybody. People loved him, always wanted to reach out and help people. And Yeah, they want to know what happened to him and I do not blame them and, and, and uh, I don't think they're going to go away. The story is so big now that the NAACP is involved and many others. So uh, we're going to get some answers. I just hope that it's not going to be some sort of blatant cover up where Amber does not pay for what she did. I don't even know if I feel like it's a racial issue. She was a white woman and he was a black man, but it might be some sort of like 
crime of passion. And I don't know how we can ignore that at this point, but we'll see. We will see. But uh, yeah, very strange story. We'll, we just don't keep our, we'll keep our uh, ears to the ground and I'll let you guys know what else comes about that. But um, prayers up to the family who lost somebody that they loved and cared for deeply and rest in peace to Mr. Baltham John. So I purposely waited to talk about this story until now because I was hoping that it would have died away. Um, and for the most part, it has, but it hasn't really. We all know what happened with uh, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. This is crazy. I'm so sick of this story. And really, I am sick of both Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, but for different reasons. Um, first, let me say that you guys know that I like Cardi B. Okay, I recently had to move her into the people that I have to love from afar. Cardi B has this thing about her where she cannot stay off of social media. Um, she cannot ignore the haters. And I get it. She's always been ratchet. She's built her image on being ratchet. She's been on Love and Hip Hop. She's shown herself as a fighter. She says it in her lyrics. And I guess, you know, people can't get mad when she, you know, acts out on what she says. You know, she's been about this life the whole time. I get all of that. But I still will maintain that Cardi B has breached. If, if she doesn't know now, especially, that you have shook a, a rap star such as Nicki Minaj so much so that she continues to come after you the way that she has. If you don't realize now the kind of star power that you have, um, then... You know, I can't just continue to be frustrated by the actions that Cardi B, you know, Cardi B does. Um, I realize that she's young. I realize that she's still trying to get her, you know, her footing in Hollywood. But when will she get it? You know, that is the question that I have. Um, I still want Cardi B to win very much so. And from what I can see, people still support Cardi B more so than Nicki Minaj. They have grown tired of some of Nicki Minaj's antics and um, have decided to root for Cardi B. And that's all fine and good. Okay, I still want it to happen for her. I just want her to concentrate on the things that have put her where she is. Okay, her talent getting out on the stage, rapping, okay, you getting all these nominations, and people want to put you in their beautiful clothes, and have you represent in Fashion Week, I mean, just that day before, she was sitting right next to Anna Wintour up on the front row of a fashion show, okay, look how far you've come, just to be knocked back, you know, a few pegs with this mess at New York Fashion Week. So I was disappointed. And as much as I don't want her to continue in this way, she seems determined to be that way. So I just, I, you know, there's nothing else that I can say or do about that. So we just have to love Cardi B from afar. Now, the reason why I have issue with Nicki Minaj is um, Nicki Minaj seems to be quite a bit, um, Nicki Minaj is smart. And she is, you know, you keep hearing people talking about poking the bear. And continue to go after somebody like a Cardi B who is so emotional and cannot really control herself. Um, Nicki Minaj is smart enough to know that if she keeps on, keeps on, keeps on at Cardi B, that in some way, fashion, or form, um, eventually the negativity will spill over and Cardi B will do something foolish to make herself look bad. I'm sure there are things going on behind the scenes that we are not privy to that Nicki Minaj may be doing. Um, but, but that's the key word. That's behind the scenes. Like, we, as the general audience, don't know about what's going on behind the scenes. So while Cardi B may know that Nicki Minaj is making all these um, fucked up ass moves behind the scenes, um, we see a fight in front of the scenes and it makes you look like you're crazy. We all know nothing about what Nicki Minaj is doing. But all we can see is you trying to fight her. So you see how Nicki Minaj has manipulated and played that into her favor? And I think she now realizes that all she has to do is keep up with this mental game um, of fucking with Cardi B. And she will continue to win. See, Cardi B is a physical fighter and Nicki Minaj is a mental fighter. And the thing when you have a physical fight versus a mental, a mental, a mental fight, to really hurt somebody in a physical fight, you have to be there with them. You have to make contact with them. 
okay? And you have the fight, and then you move on, all right? It's over. But when you are in a mental fight with somebody, when somebody can get into your head and fester in there, they don't even have to be around you. They don't even have to say anything to you. They can continue to get in your head by doing things on social media that they know that you may see or they know that your fans are going to go back and tell you about. They continue to have you thinking all the time about them and next time you're going to see them. See, you, can you see how you would lose in a mental fight? Okay, when somebody is in your head all the time, they don't even have to be around you. Nicki Minaj is so much in Cardi B's head that she cannot even enjoy her success. She can't even enjoy what all the good things that are happening around her right now. And it's fucked up of Nicki Minaj to do these things um, when one, she knows the girl is weak and that's that, you know, that is her um, downfall. But also, she just doesn't strike me as the nicest person. But she knows how to play this game. I think it's backfiring for her a little bit. I feel like uh, some of her support is weaning away. I've seen surveys and different little things that's been done on social media and um, the majority seem to still be on Cardi B's side. And remember I was telling you I didn't know how this whole, this new Nicki Minaj, you know, speaking out and being this strong black woman and not letting nobody make her feel a certain kind of way. I didn't know how this was going to play out for Nicki Minaj. I know that this Queen Radio is a good look for her. Um, it is, well, I, what I will say, I don't know if it's a good look. I will say that it's a successful look for her, okay, and that many people are tuning in, including myself, and I, you couldn't tell me that I would sit there and listen to a Queen Radio um, show and I'm mostly doing it because I have to do it for these videos, but she's getting a lot of Listens on that Queen radio and there she's able to control her Narrative, but I don't know how much it's helping. I, I don't know I'm just so tired of the whole thing because I really feel like both of these women You know that they could coexist, but it's so many people that are in both of their camps or on both of their sides, their fan bases and everything, will never let them, will never let them work it out, okay? And at this point, I, I don't think that they want to. Nicki Minaj has talked so much shit um, that when Cardi B does get, find her eventually, she's going to beat her ass. Like, she is going to fuck her up. I know Cardi B is going around saying that her truth is going to be, you know, soon. And I'm just like, what does that mean? Is it going to be an interview? Like a Diane Sawyer type of uh, something? Something is coming down the pipe where Cardi B will, you know, fully explain her side and what's been going on. When she does do that, I will let you know. But, yeah, it's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate because as a black woman, I, I hate to see. I just feel like there's more room for black women to work together than apart. It's just not time for that right now. But here we are. So that's it, you guys. Um, still love Cardi B. But um, until, until she can kind of get a hold on her temper and understanding where she is, girl, you are, I'm going to put you at A-list. I'm going to put you in A-list. You are there. Act as an A-lister now. I know it's going to be harder. You're from the streets and whatnot, but I'm going to need you to get there. I'm going to need you to get there, Cardi. As far as Nikki is, is concerned, Nikki's going to be fine. She's already made her money, okay? And um, if, her, if her reputation has to be sullied a little bit, then I guess she's willing to go with that. Um, because, like I said, she's already been a success, and I guess, you know, so that, that's it. I feel like I'm rambling at this point, so you guys just let me know what you think about that whole Nicki Minaj and uh, Cardi B thing. Um, leave your comments about it in the box below. You guys, so I watched, um, I listened actually on the way to work this morning to the Tamar Braxton interview on Wendy Williams. And uh, it was strange to me. I don't really know what's going on with Tamar Braxton. You know, we throw around like mental illness and bipolarism and things like that so much that it's become cliched. And it's not necessarily fair because it's not always what the case is. But I just feel like something is going on with Tamar Braxton. She is off. I don't know how long a nervous breakdown can last. But it feels like she's been in a perpetual nervous breakdown for like for quite some time now. 
the interview was about a few things. One, her new relationship with this Nigerian um, financial... He's a money man from Africa, basically. Supposedly, he's really fine. and I mean, I mean that's all she talked about was how fine he is. And um, when Wendy Williams asked her if she was in love with him, she said, yes. How long have you guys been together? Three months. Okay, well, I guess you can be in love with somebody in three months. But the way she was going on and on about, you know, she wanted to have African babies and all this. I mean, I was thinking to myself, like, if I was this guy... And we have been together for three months. I would that would scare me. Like, wouldn't that we the three months? You already talking about all this? Like, it was just strange to me. You know, and even Wendy Williams felt like it was strange because, you know, we're all used to her being with Vince. And now relationships, marriages go down all the time. So there ain't no reason why, you know, Tamar and Vincent's marriage couldn't go down as well. Okay, we already knew about the problems that they were having and all of that. But the, it was just strange. She, You know, in one breath she was saying that he had cheated, that somebody told her that she was ha he was having a baby, but turns out he wasn't having a baby. You know, she said he wouldn't do that to her. Um, she asked her about the domestic violence claims that her mom had put out there and she said that they weren't true. You know, her mom is old school and that she just sees yelling and screaming as abuse. Okay. I'm looking at Evelyn and saying, now, I know Evelyn might be a whole bunch of things, but I know she's smart enough to know when somebody is hitting you in your fucking face. Okay. The lady said that she saw her getting beat up. Now, I don't know how we can get that mixed up with getting, you know, yelling and screaming and throwing a pot. So, I, you know, I was side-eyeing that. I was just like, this is strange. It's just weird. And then they got on the on the, on the the subject of Ayanla. And you guys know I don't watch Ayanla. So, I didn't see this episode that they were talking about when um, she spoke to the family. That family, to me, is just... I don't want to say beyond fixing, but I mean, y'all didn't talk to T.D. Jakes. Y'all didn't talk to Ayanla. Like, who the fuck else y'all need to talk to? Jesus, okay? That, that's about all that can fix it at this point. And I guess there she was feeling attacked by Ayanla because Ayanla, you know, you guys are, we have all seen how Ayanla works, okay? She is very much uh, in your face, kind of, you know, tell it as it is. And she's not going to pussyfoot around how Tamar Braxton or any of the rest of the girls might feel about you know, their problems in their lives. So Tamar was feeling attacked, I suppose, and she walked out. She told um, Wendy, and this was another strange part, she told Wendy that she was, the reason why she walked out is because she felt like she was being forced um, to share something that she had never shared, okay, and that she had no intentions of sharing. Okay, so if you didn't have any intentions of sharing it, so why are you sharing it on Wendy Williams? And then she goes on to say that she had been molested um, from both sides of her family. Now, it seemed like it was a shock even to Wendy Williams because she didn't even ask anything else about that and moved right on to the next question. But I don't want to say that Tamar is lying, of course. I mean, if she, if, if you know, if, if that's what happened to her, that's what happened to her. It's just... Why wouldn't you, why would you do it on Wendy Williams when you had a show that, you know, you could have controlled the narrative a little bit more and kind of, you know, talked about it. You say you didn't want to talk about it, but then you just kind of casually blurted out on Wendy Williams. Like, it's just odd to me. And, and, and then she, you know, she talked about some other things, but I was just like, I, I, I honestly feel like Tamar is still in this state of confusion and, and and this constant state of upheaval going on in her life yeah just the whole interview was weird to me so if you guys are a tamar braxton fan and um you guys understand how tamar works a little bit better than i do then you can chime in and maybe explain why i was getting such a weird vibe from that entire interview that's pretty much it i am so tired like I, it's hard for me to even keep my train of thought because I'm exhausted but um <clears throat> yeah you guys leave your comments about Tamar below all right you guys so this story is strictly for whoever requested it because I did not even know I barely know who Julie Chen is um I let I do do know who Les Moonves Moonves is that his last name I know who he is 
he is the CEO and the um, chairman of CBS. I didn't know that they were married, but I do know who Julie Chen is. I knew she was on Big Brother and then she's on The Talk. Well, anyway, I didn't know that they married. Apparently, they've been married since 2004, child. It seems Les has had to step down from um, his post as chairman and CEO of CBS because he's been um, caught up in the Me Too movement and he's been accused by 12 women of sexual misconduct, sexual, sexual harassment, sexual abuse. It's the same story. These girls blasted him in the New York Times. The article came out and uh, it's been downhill for Mr. Leslie <laughs> ever since. When it first happened, they said that Julie Chen did tweet out a statement saying that, you know, she supports her husband. He's always been a loving husband, devoted. Okay, he's been a wonderful father to her kids. Um, he's been an inspiring leader at CBS. And, um, you know, she has every, um, every bone in her body says that he is innocent. Okay, so she is going to stand by her husband. Not quite sure when the article did come out, but it's come now to the time where Les had to go on and step down. When he did, she decided to call off work at the talk, okay, saying that she needed to spend time with her family. Um, but she was evidently, from what I understand, she was on Big Brother the other day, the other night when she was signing off. She normally says, I'm Julie Chen, good night. She, uh, this time she says, I am Julie Chen Moonves. Okay, good night. All right, and so that was a um, show of solidarity. Um, even on the CBS network that um, she is going to stand by her husband. And uh, that's that. People are mad at Julie Chen um, because they're saying, you know, that it's disgusting that she would go against what other women are saying that her husband did. But I'm thinking to myself, like, really, you guys? I mean, what do you expect this woman to do? This is her husband. This is who she loves. This is the father of her children. Um, did you really expect her to be like, well, I knew my husband was out there, you know, fucking around, filling on ladies and making them lose their jobs. And, I mean, do you really expect her to say something like that, even if that's what she feels and eventually these two are not together anymore um, publicly? And right now, I don't see her doing that. So um, while some people may be upset for her for ignoring what Les Moonves might have been doing. You know, I, I it's not surprising to me for a wife to stand by her husband. Okay, um, there are plenty of people who are happy about Les stepping down. Uh, many of you guys remember that he made Janet Jackson's life a living hell and vowed that he would ruin her career after the nipple gate. Okay, the incident at the Super Bowl where she flashed her nipple. Um, he was so mad at Janet Jackson that he wanted her to grovel. He wanted her to apologize, and she did not do that. Okay, and uh, that was when, you know, he was, his ego was bruised and attacked, and, you know, he just couldn't believe that this black woman was, <laughs> you know, had the nerve and the gall not to do what he says. And, um... You guys know all what happened to that. So people are now saying, like, good, this is finally what he gets because he really did set out to ruin that woman's life, Janet Jackson. It's just another, child, is just another one down, honey. That Me Too movement been hitting them all up, and I'm sure there's plenty, plenty more out there that will eventually come to uh, the surface as well. So that was for y'all because I promise you I don't give a fuck about Julie or Les. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's say a rest in peace to um, Malcolm McCormick, okay, better known as Mac Miller. He is a 26-year-old rapper who was found dead on September 7th in his home in Studio City, California. They said that he had had a party the night before. He had friends that were with him pretty much all the way until that Friday morning, but then when they left, they say that he was alive when they left. Uh, but his body was found somewhere later on that day, somewhere around the noon time, and uh, he was dead. By the time the police were called, the police said that he seemed like he had been dead quite some time. They assumed that it was probably a drug overdose because we knew that Mac Miller had problems with drugs, but there were no drugs in the house, okay? They, the police believed that the house was swept um, of any drug paraphernalia or any drugs before the police was called so that they wouldn't find any drugs in the home. They did find some small traces of white powder behind, um, but for the most part, no drugs, nothing in the house. Very, very sad. We are presuming that he died from a drug overdose.
they still haven't you know released the toxicology reports and we probably won't get that for some months but everybody knows that Mac Miller was fighting a drug addiction um, it is the reason that um, him and Ariana Grande had broken up recently because she could not stay with um, she didn't know how to be with a drug addict. You know, it's very hard to be in that position. So she had to do what was best for her, and she left. Okay, she immediately got engaged to um, the, the the kid from Saturday Night Live. What's his name? Davidson. Pete Davidson. When she left, Summer saying that um, Mac Miller got onto even a worse spiral of drug addiction. He was in a car accident um, a few like a week after she left, and. Um, some are saying that his drug addiction got worse. Yet and still, there's no way you can, comp you know, you cannot blame Ariana Grande for Mac Miller's addictions. That is nobody else's choice but his own to do that. And nobody can expect her to stay with somebody who you are afraid of, somebody who, you know, you don't know what their mood might be. We're not sure if they're going to be dead. You know, it's just a lot on somebody a lot to ask of somebody even if you love this person even if you are in love with this person you, know, you cannot ask anybody to stay with somebody who is a drug addict um, but very very sad because everybody says you know speak so highly of Mac Miller um, I wasn't really familiar with much of his music but people in the music industry the rappers and um, even singers and uh, just a lot of people have a lot of respect for him saying that he was charismatic and he was very kind and um, he just could not get this demon he could not knock the demon off of his back wasn't able to beat that drug habit we are hearing more and more people being on these drugs that's why it just kills me that people still casually take these drugs and these pills and you know shooting up and I mean it is just crazy the things that people do nowadays knowing what the outcome of drug would be it's different when crack first started okay nobody knew and everybody was chasing this high but now you know like now we know what drugs do and people still continue to try them thinking that they're gonna beat it obviously and we see that you know time and time again that they don't so very sad 26 years old like I said he didn't have any any kids he was not married he leaves you know his mom who's heartbroken I mean I can't imagine burying my son burying my daughter burying my child prayers out to his family and to many of his friends and fans around the world rest in peace to Mac Miller well, let's talk about your boy um, Mark Jacobs trying to sabotage Rihanna's um, Savage Fenty uh, fashion show the other day Okay, so they say that Marc Jacobs has always been the New York Fashion Week fashion show closer. He's always been the last big fashion show um, for that season. He's always had it on the last day at 6 p.m. sharp. Um, and all of the who's who's in the fashion world will come and sit and watch his, um, you know, his runway. Well, this year... Um, Rihanna scheduled her fashion show as the closer. Her fashion show was scheduled for 7.30. That should have given enough time for people that were at Marc Jacobs' fashion show to make it over to Rihanna's fashion show. Well, Mr. Marc Jacobs, who has, like I just told you, always started his fashion shows on time, 6 p.m. sharp, uh, this year, supposedly, there were some issues and he did not start for an hour and a half late. And they're saying that he did that on purpose to hold, you know, the fashion editors and all of the fashion critiques and, you know, the big who's who in the fashion world there at his show and so that they would miss Rihanna's show. What ended up happening is a lot of people left his show to make it to uh, Rihanna's Savage Fenty show. And then those who did stay, uh, Rihanna ended up starting her fashion show late, okay, trying to wait for some of those people to make it over to her fashion show. So both of their fashion shows started late. The insiders, the, the who's who's in the fashion world, are saying that he purposely did that, that that was him being petty, that that was him trying to sabotage Rihanna's show. How dare you schedule um, a fashion show after my show when for years and years and years I have been the fashion show closer. Now, I don't know if people just out of respect for Marc Jacobs would never schedule a fashion show after his show or is there some sort of fashion show runner, schedule runner, you know, for all of the big designers that 
you know, plan the show times. Like, I don't know how that works. But I guess he was offended that Rihanna was after him. So he thought that he would pull this trick, keep the people from going to her show. He hasn't spoken out on his side. This is all by assumption. Some people said that they had some issues getting the clothes there. Others are saying that there was some um, fitting issues. They saw them rushing sewing machines back there and all of this. But he hasn't said anything. But when I, when I tell you like big names were saying that he did this on purpose, I'm talking about like Christy Brinkley. Okay, tweeted that he purposely did this. So, you know, when you get a Christy Brinkley, you know, when she says right out that he did that shit on purpose, and he did that shit on purpose. But it, it was to, it didn't do anything to Rihanna's um, fashion show. As a matter of fact, everybody that did attend her fashion show said it was spectacular. Okay, that it was an inclusive fashion show. Okay, showed diversity. We had big, we had tall, we had short, we had small, we had heavyweight, we had thin, we had pregnant two pregnant models, one that went into um, Slick Woods, you guys know her, she went into, into labor as soon as she walked off of the stage. We had albino, we had transgender, I mean they had a little bit of everybody at that fashion show and I wish I could have been there. I mean it just looked like it was a whole bunch fucking going on, that shit looked like it was a whole bunch of fun. I just wanted to see everything, like I've seen clips and parts of different things but I mean it, it looked like it was a whole production, I mean we had women dancing and they was all on the ground and they was modeling and I was just like yeah I, I really am going to try to find that whole fashion show on YouTube but i um, so proud of Rihanna, I, I love Rihanna because she stays kind of below the radar even though everybody knows and loves who Rihanna is, she's just one of those people that everybody likes, like not too many people can do this. She has a makeup line. She has um, a clothing line, her shoe line with Puma. She has now this lingerie line. Somebody asked me would I wear her, any of her lingerie. Her lingerie is not necessarily for me. I think that it's more geared towards a, a younger audience. Some of the things I did like, but for the most part, you know, is not necessarily for me. But it doesn't matter because the young girls out there are buying her, you know, her lingerie and wearing it. And um, I just love the fact that she is all inclusive and she's trying to make sure that every woman feels there is something there for them whether it's makeup whether it is um clothing or lingerie okay that she's taking in consideration every single type of woman out there so good for rihanna good for rihanna. i guess you can give her a fist pump of righteousness too okay that black girl magic y'all ain't gonna get enough of us are you <laughs> so proud of Rihanna and I love Marc Jacobs perfume so it hurts my heart to hear that he was so petty but um, it didn't work okay I heard that his fashion show was fantastic though um, and I'm sure he'll be fine but yeah just folks just don't be right sometimes you guys but that's okay Rihanna keep on doing your thug fizzle girl <laughs> lastly you guys um Viola Davis did an interview in the New York Times. The interview was just your regular interview asking her about her career and what she, you know, has achieved in her career and things like that. And one of the questions that they asked her was, did she ever regret passing up a role? And she said, um, yeah, she has some regrets on some roles that she passes up, but she moves on from it because it ain't nothing you can do once it's done. She says, but the bigger question would be, have I ever regretted a role that I did take? And she went on to say that she regretted doing the help. It wasn't the people. Okay, she said all of her co-stars and everybody that she worked with were fantastic. It wasn't the crew. She said she had a great time working with the director and the crew. Um, she said it was the story. She didn't feel like the story was realistic to black women who worked for white women in 1963. Okay, she felt like a more accurate story could have been told and be more representative of what she knew that time to be. She said that her aunts worked for white women, that her mother worked for white women. And it just wasn't accurate and it, it didn't represent well. So she says in retrospect, she does regret, you know, taking that role. I don't know how she was in that role because I've never seen The Help. Everybody always be like, you never seen The Help? I was like, no, because I actually have never wanted to see Viola Davis in that role. I don't know why. It's the same reason why I've never seen Precious. I've never wanted to see Monique in that role. And it's, it's funny that both of those roles are both, um, Oscar winning performances but something about just the previews of Precious 
got under my skin. I was like, I know I will never, ever see that movie. I kind of felt the same way about The Help. It just never was something that interests me. So, um, that's okay, Viola. Okay, some of us didn't even see you in the movie. So, we, you know, we still love you for the black, strong woman that you are. Okay, and you got to love Viola. Uh, keep, people keep asking me if I'm going to review How to Get Away with Murder. And uh, as of now, I still don't know. Okay, I probably won't know for sure until the first episode. I got to see it and see if I get the overwhelming urge to talk about it again. Because right now, when I think about it, it's just still, a, it's still a, almost a no. <laughs> but we'll see, you guys. We'll see. Child, when I tell you, I am exhausted. I am so tired. Okay, let me just... I'm, I'm going to get it together so I can get off of here and get on back to work. Make sure that you rate... Nope, that's not the closing for this one. We do this every single week. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you come back. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.